Welcome, Aries Singles. This is your singles read. This is for totally and completely and super single people with no one on your mind. Otherwise, watch the heart spread, which is up. Also, Soul Family Read, check it out. <laughs> uh, we do that daily read. That's for whoever resonates. It's a short collective read. And uh, see if that uh, doesn't kind of hit you in the puss. <laughs> and uh, we're doing the first half of October. Uh, actually, it's going to do in October. I'm sorry. I st I'm just starting the singles reads up again. Please let me know. Give me some comments. Give me some likes. Subscribe. I think you need to drive this over a thousand so we can do this live. I think this read would be really fun live. Um, so would the Soul Family read. Um, but this read is always positive. It's a Meet the Soulmate read. And the reason it's positive because we're simply asking the right question, which is spirit who is the soulmate that would most help us as Aries to grow right now and be the most perfect one for us. So it's not gonna be the next X problem, okay? Uh, so it's always positive. I'm simply trying to describe your soulmate here and look at what I call the four pillars, emotional aspects of connection, intellectual aspects of connection, the sexual aspects of connection, and what I call lifestyle and core values aspects um, and in each of those try to pull uh, some astrology and some rising Venus if I do and um, we'll um, call that out and try to get some of their signs uh, get some stories from I tend to read for behavior and personality usually I don't get any visuals or look you know on their looks uh, but they're coming in uh, the airport's cleared because you're single and there's a place for them to land now. And we're gonna go pick them up, take them on a little bait, and get to know them a little bit. That's what this is about. Okay, here we go. Meet the soulmate, Aries. Judgment, this is in the emotional position. It's gonna be over five of cups. Uh, withhold your judgment in this reading because it's a little different than most readings. If you see a seven uh, of uh, swords, no one's cheating on you in this. Uh, Knight of Pentacles, Knight of Wands, I'm sorry, in their intellectual position. I'm going to lay it out, then I'll get into it. And the Eight of Cups is in the intellectual. On the top row, I kind of read more of the conscious energy. And the bottom here is more of the unconscious and spiritual energy I'll read. Um, both cases you've got cups there um, more fire this is in the sexual position ace of wands you want this here this is your soulmate you know you want him to be bringing the passion and this could be uh, very much with the ace of wands the sexual person you know uh, man or woman mm -hmm. and then the moon this is the moon in the sexual position um, again, more water all along the bottom. Water, water, water. Wand, Knight of Wands, Ace of Wands, Judgment. I have to use my beads. It's getting a little windy. Now, for Lifestyle and Core Values, we've got the Queen of Swords energy over top of Justice energy. Another sword. In both cases, they both have swords and they're both... Uh, I don't really read the bottom of the check in this, so we're done. Unless I need to clarify. Uh, just putting my cards back here in case it rains. I have to hustle. <laughs> I don't want. I'm going to protect the cards at all costs. So here you have uh, Queen of Wands over Justice, and um, this is terms could be you could look at their uh, how they make a living, um, their lifestyle in general, um, their core values here. A lot of air energy here. Uh, and I'll look at that kind of last. Um, they could be somebody in the criminal justice system. They work in communications. Um, they could be a dispatcher for something. Um, someone that might have to make decisions too. Um, and with the Queen of Swords. Uh, probably been doing this a while um, they're good at it they might be in some kind of management position um, they could be a celebrant as a second job celebrant as a second job a marriage celebrant this comes to mind 
Now, we're going to look at the emotional. That's what's most important to me. I always read uh, for childhood. Um, and this is not a good childhood. Um, and it shows like some kind of karmic stuff going on. Um, you see this boy here is across the river and looks like his home there is on the other side of that river. It's kind of far away. And he's off wounded and crying. Um, it speaks to me. They're going to tell you a story. They might not right away, but they might. If you ask them, um, because they are kind of emotional. I mean, they got the Eight of Cups in the intellectual position on the bottom, and this this is kind of talking about to their unconscious self, their I C, which might be in a water sign. Um, they probably suffered abandonment issues in childhood. There may have been bullying, is what they're going to tell you about. Um, and I get the feeling with the judgment card, there's a little different reading here, so don't read it like I might normally, um, but um, a little bit with the judgment card, I get the feeling like someone, they're going to tell you a story where someone, um, I want to say intervened, like or stepped in, maybe not that dramatic, it could have been as simple as, you know, honey, I need you to go stay with grandma and grandpa uh, for a while, and that was something like that. And I think that these people probably made a big difference in their life, whether it was a grandma and grandfather situation. I get grandma and grandfather situation. Um, and again, this is your soulmates. There's nothing to be afraid of. This is something they're going to tell you. And judgment there, too, uh, tells me that um, they were able to resolve this, you know, over time. Um, and they probably had karmic, with judgments, uh, always karmic. So they probably had karmic situations come up, like in their teens, and they tell you another story uh, about an early love that betrayed them or somehow abandoned them, kind of repeated this. And they have a first marriage story that repeats this theme, where they somehow end up feeling like they're abandoned and emotionally abandoned and in some kind of emotional turmoil. Um, I tried to look for the moon here as well. It's hard for me not to see this as a Scorpio moon. You know, it's kind of detached from the rest of the signs. Um, I just get the feeling that it's a Scorpio moon. So they're not someone that easily forgets also. Um, and they might be kind of secretive too. So it might not be that easy to get this story out of them now that I think about it. But if you're their soulmate, Maybe it doesn't come on the first date. Maybe it doesn't come on the third date, but I think they're going to tell it. And when they do, it's a big deal because this person probably pretty secretive, not necessarily in a bad way. High function Scorpio moon. I mean, they're just, they don't feel any need to share with you all their stuff, you know. They're certainly not going to overshare any emotional stuff. Um, but it's there, like for real. Um, and they may have with this an emphasis on yours, like, uh, want to know how you feel, what you dealt with in childhood and stuff. That's a lot of times how Scorpio Moon kind of keeps it off of them uh, by kind of talking about how it is with someone else, you know. That eighth house energy is other people's energy. So then in the intellectual position, I really like the Knight of Wands for this person. That implies some kind of fire sign. Um, now I'm looking over at their, their Moon in Pisces in an Aries. So I think we're dealing with the Aries energy here and a lot of mixture of Pisces. With this Eight of Cups, you know, they could even have a Pisces um, Mercury. Even though they got an Aries Sun, they could have their Mercury in Pisces. Um, and that Eight of Cups, I'm telling you, with the Five of Cups and the Eight of Cups, you know, they really hold on to the emotional energy. So even that stuff from childhood, they're holding on to it. I think they've learned to deal with it over time. It's going to be part of their story. Um, I tell you one thing, they very well might never put themselves again into a position where they can be abandoned. And once you are a whole adult, adult my feeling, uh, no one can abandon you. I mean, maybe if you make a pact and you're soldiers or if you're climbing a mountain. I mean, but, you know, you're an adult. Someone can leave you or... But, I mean, is that really, you're abandoning, you abandon a baby that can't care for itself. That's for real. Um, but, so maybe they're at that point now. And as a Knight of Wands, um, that a fire, airy sun energy, I'm thinking airy sun here. 
Um, and then we go to the Venus sign. And I think you're going to be dealing with the Aries Sun and the Aries Mars. But they're, they're going to have Venus in Pisces. Uh, and, you know, they may also have their moon in Pisces. So they could have a conjunction with Venus and the moon. So again, with the Five of Cups, Eight of Cups, someone who's very emotional, very focused on emotions. But, you know, being the Aries Sun and having the Scorpio Moon, you know, they're both uh, Mercury, Mars planets, you know, Mars signs. Uh, is Scorpio really ruled by Mars, as, you know, well as Pluto. And Pluto's just the higher octave of Mars. Um, so uh, they, they may not wear their uh, emotions on their sleeve, but I believe they'll be very emotional, very emotionally aware, uh, self-aware, uh, intelligent, you know, concerned. Um, and with this uh, Aries, Mars, and the Pisces, Venus, um, they're going to be very sexual. Um, they, you know, I'm just going to tell you, they'll be very gentle, to, gentle genitally, it's unusual to not be able to say a word, genitally focused. <laughs> Thank God, it's, I'm yelling that. It's a Spanish neighborhood, so they probably don't understand. Genitally focused, folks. Talking about an Aries here. Meaning, not bad, your soulmate. Just don't be surprised. That's the first thing they go to when you're making love. I've had some experience. I'm a Sag, but I kind of make love like a water sign. And it's like I simply enjoyed like pleasuring them uh, many times till they calm down. And then they go more into like their water energy. Uh, so it kind of might not, it might be like that. It just don't be afraid, you know. With this kind of energy too, like at the very beginning if they're making love, um, particularly, you, you know, um, you're an Aries, so it's Aries to Aries. Um, you know, this could be like, you could break bones, you know, or for a moment, it's like you don't, that uh, there's like a moment where it's not quite certain in each other's minds if you're fighting or just having uh, sex. <laughs> so I think like it could be like crazy uh, passionate energy um, because it's going to be someone that's like probably a lot like you. I mean, you're likely going to have uh, Pisces energy somewhere in your chart, you know, as well, even if your moon is not there. Um, so it's someone, it's a very alive with the Knight of Wands also. So they would talk fast, uh, take control of the conversation. Uh, they would be that Aries, uh, uh, but a, a little bit sensitive too with their Mercury and Pisces and all this Pisces energy banging on them. Um, but they would be, you wouldn't see them as being a soft person or a quiet person, um, or you might not even see them being a particularly receptive person, but I think they are, and just they're getting a lot. Like with that Scorpio moon, um, they would come in and from everything that happens, they're uh, getting a, a lot of information. Like they're seeing it and it's like, if you say something, they get what you're saying, and they get what you mean, and they probably get where it comes from, and they might get an idea about other things that come to them. It could be almost like psychic in terms of emotions and understanding the mechanics of human emotions um, with this person, I get. Um, and so it would be, you know, uh, passionate lovemaking, exhaustion, and then really kind of emotional cuddling and stuff like that. Even if it's a man, I think it's going to go down like that. But in terms of a job, I think they've been doing something for a while. Definitely involves communication. I think they kind of put on a little bit, of, well, I would say they put on a different hat. Uh, they're gonna be different with you and softer. It's not unusual, but it's gonna be very pronounced. If you would ever go to work with them, you would look at them and go, holy moly, is that my person? But it might be a little disconcerting for a minute uh, because they might be so different. Their tone of voice could be different. They're gonna be a lot more demanding a lot more controlling a lot more in control uh, a lot more assertive a lot more assertive than they probably are with you um, they're probably more like happy energy with you and light energy with you and whatever they do for work it's not light it's not happy um, they you I mean honestly could could even be a judge you know uh, I could see them working so, somehow too in the legal uh, you know criminal field I mean, it could even be like uh, they work in a lab, like Abby on NCIS or something. So let me know, Aries, what you think. This is your soulmate here. Uh, let me know if you, uh, this is envisioned as someone you haven't met yet. So 
Um, I need you to tell me over the next coming weeks if you run into someone like this. Good on you if you're on a dating site. Uh, keep an eye out for these this kind of personality. Uh, thank you guys.